Good evening viewers, wherever you are watching from, whether in the diaspora or within Uganda. We are glad you have made NTV your number one station. But we are also happy that NTV People's Parliament is your favorite program. It is yet another Saturday and we are in Ngora district to discuss yet a very important topic that does not only affect the people of Ngora but Ugandans at large. That is youth in agriculture. Uh, thank you, Haifa International, our partners who have made sure that we are in Ngora district to allow the people of Ngora to air out issues that affect their everyday life. And as you are aware, agriculture is the backbone of this country. And we want to see how the youth are involved and the progress that the Haifa International has put in this district. This is People's Parliament chaired by none other than your speaker, Agnes Nandutu. Welcome, honorable members, to NTV, People's Parliament. You are welcome. This is the only platform that is given by NTV for you to air out issues that affect your everyday life. And tonight we are discussing youth in agriculture, youth involvement in agriculture. But before I kick the ball rolling, may I have Haifa International to give us a preamble on what they have done in Ngora District with the youth in agriculture. Haifa International. Yeah, thank you, honorable uh, speaker and honorable members in the house. I will uh, give a background about Haifa and then specifically talk about uh, the activities that Haifa is engaged in Ngora. Haifa International is a global development organization on a mission to end hunger and poverty in a sustainable way. We work in 25 countries around the world to strengthen the local economics and build secure livelihood that guarantee living income to the small scale farmers. How long have you taken in Ngora district? We've been in Ngora uh, effectively for about over seven years now. So since 1944, that's when Haifa was born, we have engaged worldwide 32 million 200 families to lift themselves out of poverty. The model that HEFA uses is building social capital, finding ways of increasing income, assets within the farming families, and improving food security among the target families that we work with, and also improving the nutrition of the people, but also we protect environment as we do whatever we do. With women empowerment and connected communities at the very center, AFA strengthens the local farmers, organizations, and connects them to markets. Through partnership with government and other private sector actors, but also with other non-governmental organizations, HAIFA developed and continues to develop local solutions for the global problems. So, um, only remember, how many families have you impacted in Ngora district? In Ngora, we're focusing currently in 680 uh, as our target in Ngora. And, also and how successful is the project like that we can wind up? Yeah, the project is, so far, in terms of what we have done, there is a greater change in terms of the livelihoods of the young people that we are working with and their families. They are able to <coughs> access resources from the private sector, but also from government, to be able to address some of the problems that they are currently facing in. 
the engagement in agriculture is the way to go for the young people. And as today's uh, discussion is going to be done, there are key things that we noted in our operations that are kind of hindering effective participation of the young people in agriculture. One, access and ownership of land is a little bit of challenge here, and we will discuss it. Agricultural financing still remains also a challenge, and we'll discuss that. And then the other key other aspects that the young people have pointed out is agricultural inputs, access, and the quality of those inputs. As a senior youth, as a senior youth, I want to say thank you to MasterCard for partnering with HAIFA to be able to support us, the youth, to be able to put money in our pockets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You had noted down here the challenges. And chairman of the district, 680 families involved in this project, and you have had the challenges. Um, Madam Speaker, the Honorable August House, my name is Bernard De Umu the district chairperson, Ngora district local government. Um, Madam Speaker, I'm going to highlight a few things and probably also give the statistics of the youth that are involved in agriculture and those that have left agriculture and probably give reasons why they are leaving agriculture at that rate that uh, we shall share later. Have they left for better or for worse? For worse. <laughs> for us. Okay. Uh, Madam Speaker, as you all know, that the agricultural sector, which is a topic of discussion today, plays a very strategic role in the economic development of any country. Um, it is the involvement of the youth in this sector means accelerated uh, development of any, any country. Madam Speaker, if we were to go by uh, the estimates by UBOS, Uganda has over 78% uh, population composed of the youth, people below the ages of uh, 35 years. And out of that, those who are involved in agriculture amounts to 64% of the 78 percent. 78 percent of the total population, which is 42 million as per UBOS, gives us about 32 million youth, people below the ages of uh, 35 years uh, below. In rural, the, the data that is involved, I mean that is available, indicates that over 33 percent of the youth have left, have abandoned agriculture and they are going for service, uh, service sector. So only they are remember. selling airtime, they are DJs, they are riding motorcycles, and on average what they fetch compared to what they would fetch from agriculture gives about an average of 100 to 150,000 per month. So only remember if we single out uh, Ngora district, what is the performance of Ngora District? Ngora district, we... Ngora district, I want to give the statistics for Ngora. Ngora District has a, a population of 160,000. That's the total population of Ngora District. Now, if we go by the average by UBOS of 78% composing of the young people, that gives us um, about 124,000 of the young people in Uganda, I mean in Ngora. Out of that, if we removed the 64 involved in agriculture, it will give us about 78,000. And the, the 33 that have left gives us about 26,000. 26,000 of the people of the young people of Ngora have left agriculture. 26,000. So what are they doing almost, now? Almost more than the population of one sub-county. It can combine Ngora Town Council and Ngora Sub-County, combine that population. Okay. Now, they are now selling airtime, others are betting, others are in border-border riding, 
others are in the and they sell their land to get those and, and, and others have resorted to making chapatis and the rate of people moving out of agriculture from rural districts like Ngora, if we compared with the, the urban, the number is high from rural, and Ngora is seriously affected. And out of those, again, who move out of agriculture, the boys are more than the girls, and that is very serious. Now we have a very lazy husband, I mean, lazy husbands. We have lazy husbands. <laughs> <laughs> it is very serious if he married your it's, it's daughter. It's very dangerous to have less husbands yes. to people of Ngora. <laughs> many, many of our boys have left agriculture. Now mm -hmm. what are they doing to survive? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, Madam Speaker, a very serious issue. Okay, Honorable now, Chairman, I will... I'll... The, the practice, Madam Speaker, has led to um, food insecurity. Mm -hmm. Year in, year out, Ngora is begging uh, food from... Uh, uh, Minister of Disaster, Preparedness and Refugees every year because there are few people besides other factors like uh, erratic weather conditions but also few people involved in agriculture mm. and yet many want to eat. That is a very serious challenge for our district. Very dangerous. The other one is agriculture since it is also looked at as a source of employment. It by, by youth leaving agricultural sector, it means the increasing number of unemployed youth in Ngora. And that's why crime rate is high, poverty rate is high, everything high, 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 high. Okay. And the poor nutrition, according to the nutrition policy and the statistics that are available, it puts Ngora at 52%. People malnourished, 52 above average. I'm malnourished. Even here, you count 50, 150 <laughs> are malnourished. So that is very dangerous. Okay, and okay, I will give you another opportunity. I will give you another opportunity. Let me hear you. from thank the you. youth. Why are you leaving agriculture and going for betting? Uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. In one minute, please tell us why you people are leaving agriculture and engaging in chapata and betting. The major challenge today faced by the young people and it is the reason why they are negating away from agriculture is the negative mindset towards agriculture. Today as we speak, Madam Speaker, much as my chairperson, the district chairperson has elaborated and has given us vivid statistics about as far as the people who are engaged in agriculture and more are concerned, but uh, out of them, the biggest percentage are engaged in subsistence agriculture not a commercial. And today young people have forgotten that apart from engaging themselves directly to, in agriculture, there are also other chains that they can be engaged in agriculture. For example, buying and selling is one of the chains that you can be involved in agriculture but indirectly not going to the garden. Mm. The other one is value addition. And that is the reason now why you realize that even those ones who are involved in agriculture, the earnings is very low vis-a-vis -vis what the expectations. Hmm. So, uh, most of the young people today have negated doing what the chairman has elaborated, betting. As we speak right now in this parliament, the majority are busy taking alcohol. <laughs> so, it's a very big challenge. And hmm. what actually disturbs me a lot as the district you see a person of Ngora district hmm. is the, the leaders of Ngora district are not collaborating to speak the same language to synthesize young people to change their attitude towards work and it being agriculture and doing agriculture Honor, remember, I will give you another opportunity but to the people of Ngora I think it is very dangerous that you can leave agriculture I know you, you need quick money, but quick money is small money. So let's go back and engage in agriculture. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, the people of Ngora are still speaking about the challenges that they are facing in agriculture, most especially the youth.
Yes, welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament, your favorite program, the only program that gives you an opportunity to speak about issues that affect your everyday life. And tonight, we are speaking about youth involvement in agriculture. And as you have heard them, they are outlining very, very many challenges. And I, I'm sure it is not only in other district, but elsewhere in the country. Maybe the youth are also living agriculture. It's a good job, but maybe it pays in a long term. Let's hear from the youth of Ngora. Oh. Have you practiced some agriculture? Yes, madam. What are you engaged in? Currently, me as much let I am doing rice cultivation, then also maize cultivation as well. But here with me is a challenge that we face as girls. Okay. We don't have access to land control and ownership as girls majorly. Our parents are not giving us the opportunity to access land. They only tell us that when, like for example, we ask them that please we want to have access, maybe put our crops for maybe home consumption, then for sale as well. They tell us for you, you'll get married, then you'll have your land at your husband's home. The best, actually, the mindsets on the traditional norms. We therefore urge the government to support the CDOs, carry out community dialogues with our parents in rural communities so that they can change the mindsets of our parents. Mm. Thank you. That is very bad. Elders, why are you not giving land to these young people? <laughs> Please, you have the platform, Honorable Member. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. As a youth, we are really facing a challenge. Which challenge? We really have limited access and control of land. Our parents are really taking control of the land. You ask your parents, the father, papa also need my share. The parent tells you that, wait till I either die or I share out of it. <laughs> That. So it is really very a terrible a disaster for us. We also need to develop uh, or, or attain what we call the productive uh, resources. So here in Ngora district, the parents wait to die before the children can access land? <laughs> exactly, Honorable Speaker. That is the fact. A can I have a clarification from one elder, senior citizen? I can see two senior citizens and more here. Sir, don't look down. Um, I mean you. Come, come. Thank you, uh, 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 Speaker. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that um, the youth is talking that uh, uh, the parents are denying for them land, are denying for them access to land. But the fact remains that, uh, you know, some of these youth, when you give them land, maybe to own, they will, there are these ready things. They will sell off the land, and maybe <laughs> what they will do, they go and buy a boda boda. They go and buy a boda boda rider. Because for them, what they need, they need the things which are ready. So, Bajaj, when he sells the land, buys Bajaj. Then after that again, he can hire out to that garden. Then you fail to see the productive mm. part of the, that, that garden. Mm. Uh, so what you do, you don't give them until you die? No, not really <laughs> until you die. Not really until you die. Mm. But uh, you have to study him first before you give him that. Is this the right person I am to give this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I think you have heard the youth of Ngora. Don't sell land to buy border borders. But we don't always do that. Yes, we go don't. ahead. We don't. And when you look at the land they have, might have only two acres. So when you talk about two acres, somebody, the family has six boys. So which is really so hard to divide among the six boys. So I'm talking about the population. It is really growing up in our families, whereby our parents are really failing to maintain and take care of us as the youth. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Okay. I'm called by the names Atyon Joseph. I want now to come back to our position as the youth. I disagree with the, the precurrent, actually, Mr. The, the, actually the RDC and the, even the youth chairperson of Mora District. It's not the negative mindset towards agriculture. We are doing agriculture. Me personally, I'm fishing. So why are they, maybe you, but what he's talking about that many youth are engaged in chapat making? Yes. Betting, if I go to Mora Town now, people are already betting. Yes. Isn't that a negative attitude towards agriculture? It's not a negative, except only they are not supported based on their interest. For instance, now I'm coming to the point. 
Uganda, actually like Ngora, where, where the youth, we began, we're told to make fish ponds. But we're not supported. We have groups that are basically handling most of the things in agriculture. But you follow, like now of recent, we're told to have to, to dig fish ponds, but we're not given fish. The, the ponds are still open up now. Of recent, we brought the cashew nuts. That was a government program. That was a government program. What so happened? I'm bringing bring that one such that at least the government should realize that. Since we are they are not supporting since, the youth. See, they are not. Since we are Just holding, a moment, we are not, we are holding 74 Excuse me, I don't remember. Just yes. a moment. The chairperson of the district. What happened to the project? <laughs> Give him opportunity to tell the parliament what happened to the project. I would wish to call the fisheries officer, but the, the, the current the member who was on stage yeah. did not tell us, because he has just generalized it, we were told to dig by who? That's the first point, by who? Because some of the uh, programs are also politicized. Maybe you were told by a wrong person. <laughs> because if you were told by a fisheries officer, I call him here and he explains. Who marketed the project, Honorable Member? Yes, to be precise, that one was under production, and that is the wealth creation. And of course, this wealth creation is together with the, the fisheries department. Okay. And to, to, to our so surprise... So I, I want somebody to explain why you tell people to dig ponds, and then for years, they are still there. They are still open up now. And it, to make it worse, we have brought cash nuts. Okay, let him explain. Then we have the commander in charge of operation with creation. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, indeed, we are trying Introduce to... Introduce yourself, Honorable Member. Oh. Introduce yourself, please. I am Colonel Richard Okwakol, Operation Wealth Creation Coordinator, Mura District. Mm. It is true, as the member has alluded, indeed, we are encouraging them to engage in fish farming as an alternative why? Because of the, the very pressure they have on land. And when you go into fish farming, it helps. But we did not say that we shall be able to support you fully. We told them, you can engage in fish farming as an alternative source of So land. you are not facilitating them? Now, now, <laughs> uh, now, okay, the, 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 we received some, some, some fish fingerlings which were not enough to go around everybody. We have a problem of resource envelope. Therefore, whatever we get, a few are able to access it. So what Therefore, happened to the few that remained? They, they got the, 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 the fingerlings, and I think they were doing well with them. And some of them have started on their own to, risk, to stock on their own after being supported by government. So you were not able to give every way? No, not everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you, the youth are not happy. And, and why were cashew nuts brought of recent again, instead of the, what, the finger licks that we're told of? So that one, I'm bringing it such that to disagree with the other statements that were given. That but the, the youth, youth have a are, negative uh, attitude. No, 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 no. Okay, thank you. I'll we give you another opportunity. Field. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the Haifa International is doing a good job, encouraging the youth to engage in agriculture. They're even supporting them. But I think we also need government support to ensure that these youth are helped, instead of going into betting, the powers that be, I think you have heard the voices of the people of Ungora District. Go ahead, Honorable Member. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, to begin with, let's understand the rise of the negative attitude. And understanding it means starting from a family level. In a family where we are five boys and then two girls, our father and mother, we cultivate two gardens of ginats. After harvest of the two gardens, we have got 20 bags. It is the father in charge of everything. <laughs> Your father will always tell you, put those ginats where? In the granary, and is the one doing what? Selling. As a boy, you'll have to look for money to buy a simple trouser. Now, and yet the, you have dug. And yet you have dug. At the end of it, all the next season, what will happen? Please dig your land. After all, I never got to what? Last season. So if we begin to understand the magnitude of the negativity from family level, there we shall understand why, as youth, we are turning back to agriculture. Okay. Secondly, 
I don't know why we are still concentrated in subsistence agriculture. We talk about agriculture, but as the chairperson alluded to it, that we have different chains of agriculture. I don't know why we are so embedded in digging. Yet we can keep, we can keep chicken. We can do piggery. That is agriculture. From a small piece of land, we can do several things. But it looks to me the whole topic of agriculture is about digging. If a youth is told that these are 25 heads of chicken, out of the 25, please start something. At the end of it all, I know, sure, I'm going to sell one chicken, which is around 25,000, and I'll buy a trouser. Do you think I will still go back into digging with my father? So, we have not totally left agriculture enormously. But we need support. We Take need different supports. And besides, like I said, mm. as we wind up, access. Access to everything. Other people are talking about access to land, but access to information is the key. If you taught me how to keep chicken, I don't think I will fail to keep chicken. If you taught me how to do piggery, I don't think I would fail to do piggery. Like you have said, all of us know that as a youth, I'm one of them, I want something that, is, that matures quickly. And a cock is there, it matures quickly. A pig is there, it matures quickly. Okay. Why do you give me to grow G nuts from January up to September? Even, even if it reaches September, you, the father, again pockets everything. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so you much. Have voiced your concern. I just say, uh, Haifa International, do you also support this youth in uh, value addition? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yes, it's one of the key aspects that we're focusing on within the different value chains. So there's been training uh, in relevant uh, agricultural value chain nodes. If it is, for example, poultry, we currently are training our young people on poultry keeping, okay. for example. So we do that. Okay. And we're focused on doing that uh, for the groups that we're working with. Okay, thank yeah, you. Thank so, you. so there is information from Haifa International, the, the previous speaker. There is information from Haifa International. Why haven't you taken advantage? Yes, my counterpart. What do you want to say? The speaker of the district. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. My name is Mojiro Tanapa, a district speaker and a local government. Madam Speaker, I know everything in whatever you're planning to do is approach. Even when you want a woman, the way you approach matters. In this case, when you look at the two programs, the government programs, development programs meant for the youth, and this one brought by development partners, most especially HIFA. The, the, the approaches differ. When you look at the approach of, uh, of us, the government, it is not so catching as compared to the approach HIFA uses. For us, it is a, a top-bottom approach. Guidelines come from up. Tell those youth to do A, B, C, D. Let okay. them dig ponds, yes. and then they abandon <laughs> But uh, when you look at the approach HIFA uses, HIFA uses uh, a bottom-up approach. So in this case, it is the youth who determine what they want to do. In this case, I can uh, give an example like uh, HIFA uses the approach of self-service. You just point out that uh, serve for me that, uh, add me this, leave for me this. You realize that you take what you want, what you can consume, at your own pace and at your own time. So the issue of approach matters. Okay. If we are not going to realize that we give this youth to determine what they want and we continue with the top bottom approach, it is going to be disastrous. Okay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, my counterpart. <laughs> Operational creation, you have uh, you have had no um, you have had the concerns of the youth. You have had the concerns of the district speaker. Your approach is you order people, pl dig the ponds, and then you abandon them with the ponds. <laughs> Till they land, and you don't give them input. So first train the youth, like Haifa International is doing. The government, you have had the youth of Ngora. They have challenges. Um, access to finances, access to land, maybe laws need to be changed. There's also uh, agricultural inputs. What are you doing as government? 
How are we helping our youth to involve in agriculture? You have heard their voices. Let's go for a short break, and when we come back, they are going to give us solutions on how government can approach the youth to be actively involved in agriculture. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching your favorite program, NTV People's Parliament, sitting here in Ngora District, talking agriculture, the youth involvement in agriculture. You have heard their voices, you have heard the challenges, the powers that be, the Minister of Agriculture, those who are in charge of operational recreation, you have heard the challenges of the youth. How are you coming in to help them to ensure that they all engage in agriculture for us to have enough food? For this country yes what can we do okay. thank you thank you madam speaker my name is I justin i'm a teacher by profession uh, madam speaker a lot has been said and blamed <coughs> on the youth but i think the biggest challenge the youth have is lack of scientific knowledge in their productive capacity mm. uh, when you give the youth say poultry oh. what breed of poultry are you giving the youth is it adaptable to the environment in Ngora so that the productive potential of that chicken is able to give the youth hope? Now, we are talking about land. Our land has lost productivity because it is being used year in, year out. There is no rest period. There is no fallow. So the youth should be encouraged to prepare organic manures which will enhance the productivity of the land so that they will continue using the land. Today we should not think about expansive use of the land, but we should use intensive methods, which involves use of legumes that will help to improve the fertility level of the land. New markets should be opened for the youth, because if the youth is going to produce and sell in the local market in Mora here, he's not going to get anything good. Okay. They should be linked to bigger markets in towns and cities, then feeds for livestock are very expensive. The youth should be taught to use local feed materials in their environment okay. so that they compute the ratios for the animals. Okay. Mora produces a lot of valuable feeds, but the youth don't know how to use them. Mm. Instead, crops are being shipped out of the area. The byproducts, therefore, do not benefit the youth. So if we do that, then we shall be able to help and attract our youth back. Then the other last component is labor. The youth of today don't want to use physical labor. We should use animal power. We plow using animals, but when it comes to planting, weeding, we use physical labor. We should have appropriate technology implements which animals can draw and reduce on drudgery. It is the drudgery which drives the youth out. Okay. And they take a lot of time. When okay. we use animal drone implements to save on labor and time, the youth, certainly, Madam Speaker, will come back to agriculture. That's agriculture a good, is honorable. That's a good for, way forward. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Please, in one Yes, minute. thank you very much. By name, I'm Lazarus Odeke. I'm a teacher in making. Madam Speaker, there is one thing, and that is implementation of government programs, more so operation wealth creation. In order, Madam Speaker, it has turned to be operation poverty creation because the seedlings or the seeds are delivered at a wrong time. So when a farmer plants, when a young man plants, actually the sun will come and hit everything. That thing must be fought for seriously. Then <clears throat> another example, the president in his tour came to Ngora and gave a tractor to, to the youth. But, Madam Speaker, the tractor is packed in police. I don't know whether their fundies are the ones using the tractor. That thing should be explained to the youth of Ngora. I, I, it I is thank, part of the police station. I, yes, I thank God our chaperson is here. He will explain it to us. <laughs> that thing is not good. It was brought to the youth, not to pass to the police station. Okay, thank you. That's a good one. Let, let, let me have the fundie and maybe the district chairperson. Do you know why the tractor is parked at the police station? The, the, Madam Speaker, the right person to answer uh, about the tractor 
is uh, here. Uh, maybe I will invite him. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. You are Madam, the deputy? The district use Chapasul. The district use Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, it's very true. The president gave the youth of Ngora a tractor. Madam Speaker, as we speak right now, the tractor is packed to the police. And it is in a good working condition. Mm. Madam Speaker, when you look at the average per hectare of land in Ngora, you realize that each family is entitled to have 1.1 hectares of land. They talked about population. Now, when you, when you factor it, when you factor it to the per person, you realize that the per person has 0 0.2 ownership of land in every family. Why isn't the tractor working? Can you explain? Madam Speaker, there is no demand for the tractor in Ngora district, and the tractor is there. There is no demand? There is no demand. There is no there is demand, no for, demand for Ngora, and the tractor is there. Thank you. Whoever Madam. wants the tractor as a young person, please go to order, contact the management, order, the management committee okay, of the tractor. Okay, we have heard, we have heard. The tractor is not on demand. Is that true? Madam Speaker, that is a naked lie. Yesterday when I got this invitation, I went to police and the tractor is not working. That is the information. So, Madam Speaker, the government should look at that. Okay, when thank you. Let me give another opportunity to the lady also. You have thank made you your point. Madam Speaker, my name is Stella Apolot, a.k.a. Ejulano. Let's talk about first things first. Let's talk about budget allocation in the sector that we view as very important. The Maputo Declaration uh, required all parliaments to allocate at least 10% to agriculture. Please, talk straight to the people. But Uganda is allocating 2.5 in the current financial year, 2.5 to agriculture. If we're talking about motivating not only the youth, but everyone in the sector, we need to begin by allocating uh, at least 10%. Number two, Madam Speaker, we are talking about the youth accessing finance. The youth do not have collateral that the bank is requiring them to have. So I am here suggesting that we need to access more finance to the youth. And lastly, there should be an affirmative action for the female youth to participate in this, sec in this sector. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Thank you for being precise to the point. Please, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I am Anyu Awujo Helen, uh, putting my voice on to the, one of the challenges or to the youth raised. And the way forward. And the way forward, clear way forward to it. One of which is that the negative mindset, the negative attitude, struck with bad cultural practices. In our communities, we value mainly Gallo children as assets who will be married away. So for that reason, most of them don't get land, access to land. So uh, they wait for them when they mature, they marry out, is when they will start practicing agriculture. But the Bible clearly states that train children in a good way so that when they grow up, they will not run away from it. Agriculture is one of the ways our children should be brought up, especially on these good agronomic practices. When we talk of good agronomic practices, we have to catch the energies, and water is one of them. When you catch the waters, waters help us break the soils. In turn, soils bring up good crops. When we get those good crops, our children can sell. When they just utilize this intensive agriculture, a smaller land, when they grow, you find that they can sell their vegetables and then they get what? The money. And they will just really be interested in such systems. They will not run to towns. It is because we parents have disappointed them. Okay. They grow and we don't give them any, anything. Mm -hmm. It's what disappoints them. So okay. I urge us as a way forward. Let, us, let the stakeholders get on board to train these children on good agronomic practices and also apportion smaller lands to these youth. They can utilize it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank the you, vice chairperson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am the leader of government business in Ngora District, and I'm called Honorable Ariebi Naume. Madam Speaker, 
we had a challenge in Ngora district where we as leaders encourage the youth to mobilize themselves into groups and benefit from the NAD secretariat, especially on practical supply of these agricultural inputs. And this one is going straight to the NAD secretariat. I don't know if they are here. The challenge that we got in Ngora district was there was a group in Mukura Sabu County where all the, most of those youths organized themselves into a group to produce the citrus seedlings. And after a long dry spell from last year to this time, these people were, were not given a call of order. Even after they went through the whole procurement process, they, were, they even signed a memorandum of understanding. They were not given a call of order to supply. And what happens to the seed, seedlings now in the nursery beds? They were stolen. Now, how do we ask the youth, how do I stand again to tell the same youth to engage mm. in agribusiness? How do I start it now? Sure. I am even ashamed I can't go to those youth to tell them to go and again make what? Take more, engage themselves <laughs> in the nursery bed preparation. Who is going to take the cost for watering those things? Thank for you. buying the seedlings? Who is taking that cost? I am discouraged by the by the NAD secretariat, and I know here the commander may have knowledge on that issue. Thank the you. NAD secretariat have had. Um, yes, uh, Chairperson, go forward. Uh, Madam Speaker, way forward, overhaul the district, I mean, the education system that is preparing job seekers other than job creators. Madam Speaker, I want to believe that you and me are almost at the same age bracket. Those days before you go to school, you start with agriculture. You go to class to study theory, you have already done practical bit of it. Today, from 4 o'clock a.m., a child goes to school, comes back at 5. After that, there is homework. After the homework, the TV. From the TV, school, no garden work. And that is what our system has prepared. The negative attitude that we are talking about emanates from that. Okay. Overhaul the district, uh, education system, that's the first thing. The other one, yesterday I was on radio talk show discussing the same issue. People say there is a need for regulation of this rapid population growth. It is too rapid. Actually, it is... The Teso region has the highest fertility rate in the whole world. <laughs> I, I, I read a lot. I read a lot. This is true. But they are not to blame. It's God. And, and, the, <laughs> and the, the largest family size in the whole world, you get 7.1%. Mm. In America, it is a minimum of three people per family. How many do you have, Chairman? I have three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the American type. <laughs> I'm the American okay. type. So, <laughs> ma <laughs> Madam, order, order on the members as you wind up, Chairman. Madam Speaker, why I'm emphasizing on that? 2010, in 2010, the land holding per family was at 2.5 hectares per household. Mm. It has reduced to 1.1, which the chairperson youth was talking about, mm. and that threatens the youth. Okay. The other one, make this agricultural sector yeah, very one. attractive. Mm. Very attractive for the youth. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Fa International, we forward. You have heard the, the youth. Yes, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I've heard the youth. And uh, a way forward, we will continue to work with the youth groups. And the major focus for us is aspects of the value chain, not just production, because of the limitation of land. So we'll definitely take the advice that has been provided by some honorable members on how we shall focus for those youth who are interested in the real production and agriculture. Mm. But as said, the markets, it's also our commitment to make sure that whatever we do will begin from the market. And we are committed in terms of partnership with the local government and other <coughs> private sector actors 
to make sure that we will create the jobs so that the youth in Ngora stop the aspects of which have been talked about, the betting and running away from agriculture. Mm. I'm told the current billionaires are people in IT. The future billionaires will be people engaged in agriculture. Thank you. Thank you. You, you have a burning way forward, the, the youth, yeah, please. Come and speak from here. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. <laughs> uh, my name is Ambrose Ogol, District Vice Youth Chairperson. Uh, I have a way forward on, because everyone was complaining, the youth are not, they are not interested, they are not involved. The youth are always willing to participate in agriculture. So we should come up with some ordinances, maybe at the district, to handle the issue of land ownership. Then the issue of gambling, they are saying the youth are gambling on the, all the time. Maybe we should come up with an ordinance as a district to regulate gambling. Then we should come up also with an ordinance to regulate alcohol. And we should always be involved as young people of Ngora district if we are going to encourage the young people to participate in agriculture. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good way forward as a district. You have to come out with ordinances to regulate alcohol, to regulate bet betting, such that the youth can engage in agriculture. Yalama Noi, thank you so much for being part of People's Parliament. And the youth are still speaking. Thank you those who have been watching us. Thank you for being part of People's Parliament in Ngora District. The youth have a lot to speak about agriculture. And because of time constraint, we cannot continue. But because of the importance of this topic, the youth in agriculture, we shall continue with this topic next Saturday. I am your speaker, Agnes Nandutu. And as usual, I aspire to inspire all Ugandans before I expire. With the powers conferred upon me as the Speaker of People's Parliament, I adjourn this house until next Saturday.